Hello and welcome to our tiny garden. My name is Paula. I am a seasoned microbiologist and biotechnologist and above all, I am a passionate gardener. On this channel, we talk about everything concerning organic cultivation, from the benefits and the uses of organic fertilizers to the innovative techniques when it comes to the biological control of pests and diseases. And my goal is to ensure that you cultivate a thriving garden while understanding the science behind organic cultivation. So whether you are a seasoned gardener or you are uh, just starting out, do not worry. I assure you that you're going to get, to get very great insights from this channel i am very thrilled to have you on board if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe now now on this video we'll be talking about red spider mites we'll be discussing what they are how they look like how they, to identify them and most importantly how to control them biologically so without further ado let's get into the video the two spotted spider mites can vary in color from green and yellow to red and orange. It is a pervasive agricultural pest known for infesting a wide variety of plants, and this includes fruits, vegetables, and ornamentals. These tiny arachnids are recognizable by two dark spots on their bodies. They thrive in hot, dry conditions and reproduce rapidly, leading to severe infestations. They feed on plant sap by piercing leaf tissues with their stylet-like mouth parts that causes stippling and yellowing and eventual leaf drop. Heavy infestations can stunt plant growth, reduce their yields and even kill the plants. Their presence is often escalated by resistance to common pesticides and therefore this makes them a challenging pest to manage and control in both commercial and home gardens. The life cycle of the two spotted spider mite comprises of several stages that include the egg, larvae, protonif, deutonif, and then finally the adult. The females lay spherical translucent eggs on the undersides of leaves, which hatch in a few days into six-legged larvae. These larvae feed for a few several days before molting into eight-legged protonif stage. After another feeding period, they molt into the deutonif stage, which also feeds before undergoing a final molt into adulthood. The entire life cycle can be completed in as little as one to two weeks under optimal conditions that includes warm temperatures and low humidity. And this allows populations to expand rapidly. Adult females can live for several weeks and lay hundreds of eggs, perpetuating the cycle and contributing to the potential for rapid and severe infestations. One of the highly effective biocontrol agents against two spotted spider mites is hands down Phytocylus persimilis. Phytocylus persimilis is a highly effective natural predator of the two spotted spider mites, providing a biological control method for managing mite infestations. These predatory mites actively seek out and consume all stages of spider mites, and this includes eggs, larvae, nymphs, and even adults. A single Phytocylus persimilis can consume several dozen spider mite eggs or larvae each day. They are highly effective at locating their prey due to their rapid movement and acute sensory abilities. Phytocylus persimilis reproduces very, very quickly under favorable conditions, and this enables them to keep pace with the rapid reproduction rate of spider mites. And here is a fun fact. It was the first commercially used biocontrol agent in 1968. It has revolutionized pest management by providing an effective alternative to chemical pesticides. In terms of application, Phytocylus persimilis must be used immediately upon receipt. The contents are to be shaken gently and then sprinkled onto infested plants, focusing on areas with high concentrations of two spotted spider mites. The mites are usually applied early in the morning or late in the afternoon to avoid direct sunlight and extreme temperatures that can reduce their effectiveness. Proper application ensures that Phytocylus persimilis can quickly establish themselves and begin 
preying on the pest mites, providing an effective and natural method of pest control. Phytocellus persimilis is typically packaged in containers that include a carrier material such as bran or sawdust, and this facilitates distribution and protects the mites during transport. The containers often come with a predetermined number of predatory mites that are suitable for the specific area to be treated. Other effective predators of two spotted spider mites include Neocellus californicus, and this was previously called as Amblyseus californicus. So when you see those two names, it means one and the same thing. We also have ladybugs and we have lace wings. The other biocontrol agent against two spotted spider mites is the entomopathogenic fungus Metahesium anisopili. Metahesium anisopili works by infecting two spotted spider mites through contact. When applied, the fungal spores attach to the mites' bodies, and upon contact, the spores germinate and penetrate the mites' cuticle, colonizing their internal tissues. Inside the mite, the fungus proliferates, eventually leading to the mites' death. As the mite dies, it releases more fungal spores, further infecting nearby spider mites and continuing the cycle. Metahesium anisopili is packaged as a fungal spore suspension with a carrier material and applied by diluting with water and spraying onto the plant foliage. Application is usually done in early morning or late afternoon for optimal effectiveness targeting spider mite infestations. Finally, two spotted spider mites can be controlled by the use of botanical or plant-based biocontrol agents, and these include pyrethrins and also neem oils. These substances act as insecticides or repellents, disrupting the feeding behavior, development, or reproduction of spider mites. Additionally, essential oils from various plants such as peppermint, rosemary, and thyme have been shown to be effective in repelling or controlling spider mites when applied as sprays or incorporated into pest management strategies. And there you have it. Now you have all the information that you need in regards to red spider mites, how to identify them, and most importantly, how to control them naturally. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who might be interested in this kind of content, and above all, do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at the biological control of downy mildew and what is the difference between downy mildew and powder. Powdery mildew. Until the next video, happy gardening!